Hey guys, Jim here. We're going to start off in the dark because I want to show you one of the unique features of this knife that we're about to showcase that I might not get a chance to show you later, and that is the glow-in-the-dark firing buttons on the brand new Prometheus Design Works Invictus that I have here in front of me. Now, what this knife is, it's the um, automatic version of the Invictus. Very, very cool knife, very affordable for most people and easily accessible as long as you're allowed to have an automatic knife in the state that you live in. It's got some nice features, it's a great size. This is going to be a pretty positive review. I've had a chance now to uh, carry mine, which is the gray one, uh, for about two weeks and I've really enjoyed it. It's very slim, very lightweight being uh, 6061 T6 aluminum. Very easy to carry. There's not really much to knock about this knife. It's simple, it's straightforward, and that's exactly what the owner of PDW and the designer of this knife, Patrick Ma, wanted it to be. Simple, to the point, nothing ridiculous, and made for function, and it just happens to look good on top of that. So there are going to be three options for you. Uh, Patrick and Chris were kind enough to send out one of each color variation, so I got a chance to show them all to you. There is the uh, Olive Drab Green, OD Green. I'm not an OD Green fan myself. It's actually a color I despise. I'm not really sure why, but it is very, 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 very popular. There is the Arctic Gray, and of course, the Black. Now, this is going to look a lot like the knives that you've seen from PDW so far, and we're going to talk about that a little bit, and also why it may resemble some other knives that you're familiar with. But first, let's talk about the specifications and the operating mechanism and the safety mechanisms that they've employed. So let's get a couple of these out of the way just because my camera wants to focus on the wrong things at the wrong time. First off, you're looking at a uh, Type 2 hard anodized 6061 T6 aluminum frame. Nice and slim, lightweight, easy to carry. Uh, the handle is 4.725 inches directly from PDW's website. Your uh, overall length is going to be 8.225 inches. Let's go ahead and release the safety, get it open, and take a look at the blade as well. Blade's 3.5 inches on the uh, cutting length very 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 good size I'm a big fan of three and a half to about three and three quarter inch that's kind of my safety zone that's my uh, comfort zone I should say I like to carry in that size because you don't have a knife that's too unwieldy to carry in any number of pants pockets and it's not so small that you feel like it's not going to do the job. Listen, you know, we all carry knives for different reasons. The primary reason is going to be it's a tool. It's there to cut shit. But it's also a wonderful secondary self-defense tool. If for some reason you cannot get to your primary defense tool, which is probably going to be your pistol, uh, for some reason that's incapacitated, whatever the reason may be, you're going to want to be able to reach for your knife. And you want something that's going to do the job not a little you know, two and a half inch, obviously anything can cut. You could take a, a scalpel, you could take a razor knife, you could take whatever you want, it's gonna cut, but you want something that's actually going to be useful for that purpose should that need arise. Okay, so that's your specs right there. The weight, 5.8 ounces. It's got a little bit of heft to it, but uh, it is very lightweight, as I mentioned before, and very, very easy to carry. And there's some neat little features done into this design. If you take a look at it, here you have your glow-in-the-dark firing button. There you have your safety mechanism. So if this is forward, you cannot fire the knife. It completely locks it down. It will not let the plunger down to release the mechanism. Once you unlock it, it is now rendered into the firing position. And it is an extremely strong spring in this. And I have to commend PDW for that. You guys know that I have a lot of automatic knives. I've reviewed a lot of automatic knives. And the biggest thing for me on a side opener is that it needs to really come whipping out hard. And this definitely does. This is, this is not a weak spring whatsoever. They did a fantastic job picking that. Nice and snappy. Super fast. Nice clean design across the back. They've got some jimping here across what would normally be the back spacer on a traditionally built knife, but this is just two halves 
of an aluminum frame, so they've jimped each half and sandwiched it together. Back here you have an area to run a lanyard through if you so choose, which uh, probably not a bad idea for most people. Really nicely done. So you don't have a big hole sticking out in your frame. There are a lot of guys that do not ever use lanyards and you know they don't want a big hole in their frame. It's just like me. I, I, I carry right-handed carry. So I don't want an ambidextrous set of holes over here to be able to move my clip over. It detracts away from the look of the knife. It looks like shit because I don't need it. So for those that don't ever use a lanyard, it's not taking away from the, uh, the nice clean presentation side. It's tucked away nice and clean back here. Now you could also tie off a lanyard to the, uh, the clip as well because it is opened up. But it's opened up so that it kind of grabs your thumb because it is a deep carry clip. And you guys know I am not a fan of deep carry clips. Matter of fact, I despise them. I don't want a knife that's all the way down in my pocket where I can't get to it where the only thing I have left to grab is the clip because when you grab it, you're squeezing. What happens when you squeeze? You're adding tension and it's holding onto the pocket even more tightly. I don't want that. I want a little bit popped up so part of my hand can grab the actual knife. However, when they do this slot, and the first time I had ever experienced this was about three years ago with a lamb of cutlery on my Wayfarer. Love that idea because it kind of grabs, the, see how the fat of your finger goes down into there? Boom. And it's a little bit easier to snatch where you don't have to squeeze, you just let your finger do all the work. That's what she said. Nice, clean, easy design. It is a simple spring clip, but it's got good tension. It's got a nice duck bill on there, so it allows entry into even thick jean pockets without needing a second hand to reach over and pull open the clip or to hold the pocket. Uh, it's been very easy to slide in and out, but it doesn't feel uh, insecure in any way. You'll notice the blade goes pretty much all the way to the end of the frame, so they are maximizing the amount of room they have to put the blade in there so you have a more compact knife. Very, very well done. My finger does not snag the tip of the blade. Notice how it trails off down. It's because of the shape of the blade. As you see right there. Just a nice, clean, somewhat simple. I don't want to call it simple because then you, then you think to yourself, oh, well, he's saying it's simple to design a knife like this. It's not. To make it completely utilitarian and fit everybody's hands and to do everything that it does, it's not simple, but it's a very simplified design where there's no extraneous bullshit. Uh, basically, let's go ahead and open this up. We'll lay out the other two. We'll talk about the concept of the knife and the design. Uh, what I'm going to do right now is I'm basically going to read something that's right off of uh, PDW's uh, info sheets. And I think it's, it's probably the best way to word it so I don't uh, sidestep and go into a tangent into something I really don't need to. And you'll understand what I mean when I get into this. Uh, it says, uh, prior to this production model, a custom edition was made by knife maker and craftsman Alan Elishowitz. A lot of guys know Alan. Um, he's, uh, he's in the, the Knife Makers Guild. He's a uh, very, very popular maker and does some really, really cool shit. Well, Alan and Patrick, it says, have collaborated on various custom knife projects over the last 10 years. And other custom iterations have been in the works with PDW and will be released as they're completed. Now it goes on to say, many consumers and members in our community will and have already recognized the distinct style of this folder as Patrick has created previous products in this arena, all of which possess his specific design style. Um, that the design direction can be and is recognized means that he has done his job as a designer by remaining loyal and consistent to the vision while pushing new details that any particular object or product forward and to new revolutions, oh, excuse me, to new evolutions. Listen, um, very, very quickly and concisely, um, before Patrick founded PDW, before he opened up this company, um, he was involved with another brand that we all know and love. And they have released knives that look very, very similar to this. And that is during the time that Patrick was there designing knives for them. So that's why you're seeing the design resemblance. However, I think the, the overall execution, every bit is good. I think their pricing, at least as far as I'm seeing it, is a little bit less, and you're getting good bang for the buck. You can pick up any of these three for $389. For an automatic 
with some nice features like the glow-in-the-dark locator uh, and all that kind of neat stuff. It's a great idea. I've had a lot of people comment on videos when I've done videos on uh, automatics saying, oh, I'm really afraid of it firing in my pocket or going off accidentally. Number one, even if you don't use the safety, you have a completely flush firing button. So it is highly unlikely that you're going to depress it and push that plunger down far enough to where it's going to fire. But if you have that fear, this is one of the few automatics that I've seen that does have a safety. So you don't ever have to worry about it. They put the safety in a practical location as well. I've seen some uh, back here and stuff like that. As you're grabbing the knife and you're ready to bring it out and you're ready to hit that switch, your thumb is already there. So you don't have to move your thumb position or even change your hand position in order to manipulate it. So it's not going to be any slower. So as you're grabbing it and you're reaching for that firing button, you can just very simply slide it. Notice how my thumb is still right there over the uh, firing button. And boom. So it is a true one-handed knife. You don't have to do anything goofy or weird. It's not going to slow you down if you choose to use the safety. It's a great feature to have. You've got a very slick frame here. The, the hard anodizing on here does add a little bit of a texture. Now, it's not going to make it grippy, but it's, it's less slick than if it were just the raw aluminum. And let's get that open again. Let's take a look at the blade. Nice clean stone wash on that blade. I would have preferred to see a two-tone, honestly, maybe a satin flat or a black flat, and then have the stone wash on the primary and the swedge. Everybody's different. That's just my personal preferences. The jimping on here is wonderful. That's one of the things that I'll constantly go to as a plus or a minus on any knife that I'm reviewing. Sometimes they're just useless, they're smooth, and they're not really doing anything. It's more for aesthetics than anything else. And sometimes they get so crazy with it that it's so sharp, it tears up your skin, uh, it tears up the, uh, the pocket of your pants. This doesn't do either one. Uh, it feels nice, it's not tearing anything up, but when I push into it, you see how it's pulling the skin of my thumb away from the thumbnail. It is really, really grabbing on there nicely. I would have preferred to see a little bit of jimping here on the frame as well. That would have been nice. Uh, the jimping back here really should have probably gone around, but I don't know if that would have hindered them doing the lanyard slot here or not. But it definitely should have uh, have come around because a lot of guys, uh, especially like, like me, I have a size large hand, uh, size large glove, so my thumb goes all the way over it. And that's one of the other nice things about this shape. It's meant to be held in these various different positions. You've got a nice recess, a nice choil here. You've got a choil up on the blade so you can choke up on it and a nice place to rest your thumb and actually follows this very, very nicely. Overall, when you look at it and go, well, it looks kind of plain, it looks kind of basic, it actually has everything right where you need it. It works exactly how you want it to. It fits your hand properly. It's got a great blade shape. It's going to be useful for everyday cutting tasks. It's going to be fine for self-defense should you ever need to get to that point. It's practical in the way that it carries because it's slim, it's lightweight, it's small. I should say it's compact, yet it's not too small. You've got the options in carry with a lanyard or without, without taking away from the design. Let's fire up that uh, glow-in-the-dark button again. Put a little bit of light on it. And... This is going to be your locator should you have to reach for the knife in the dark. Pretty nice deal. I think as a package deal, it's great. Um, I wouldn't rely on the glow in the dark button to last for a very long time. Uh, it's probably going to glow visibly for a couple of hours. It's going to go brightly for maybe only a couple of minutes. It's just a glow in the dark G10. It's not moon glow. Uh, and obviously there's no tritium gas tube in there, it's not super luminova, so it's not going to glow for a tremendously long time, but it will serve the purpose and that's all it needs to do. I don't know of any other knives that are doing that, so it's, it's just an extra bonus. 
Overall, I like the knife. I've really enjoyed carrying it. Um, it is a bit slimmer than a another knife that you've seen me review that looks a little bit similar to this in a manual folder. Um, this is slimmer and a little bit easier to carry. So it really depends on A, uh, will the knife laws in your state allow you to carry this? And B, do you want to carry an automatic? It may not be your thing. That's fine. They are releasing a uh, titanium frame lock of this version of this knife and it may actually may already be available. And it's going to be what they call a semi-custom. I'm not going to get too much into that because I may or may not be reviewing one in the future. And if I do, we'll talk about who made the knife and, and why I think it's really honestly a custom and not a semi-custom. Um, there's production knives that are going to be coming out. There are full customs where they're collaborating with uh, really good knife makers. So you're going to have a lot of different options with Prometheus Design Works. I think they've got a nice concept here. They're probably going to ride it forever because it is one of those designs that you don't really need to change. You know what I'm saying? It, when it works, don't fuck with it. When it works, leave it the way it is that people enjoy. And obviously, um, this form follows function kind of uh, design nature is something that Patrick is very, very good at. And the public has been very receptive to his design work. Is PDW going to get as big as the uh, as the companies that Patrick's worked for in the past? You know, it's really hard to say, and it's a little bit too early to try to make that determination. That's not really fair. But one cool thing, whether PDW is around for the next 50 years or only the next five months, on this first run, these are all individually numbered 0 to 100. So there is a little bit of a collectability status to it. Listen, most of the guys that are buying this type of knife really aren't doing it for a collectible status, but it's nice to have that bonus. This is probably going to be a knife that most people are going to use. They're going to cut shit with it. They're going to throw it in the glove box of their truck. They're going to run around with it and knock it around because that's what it's made to do. Uh, if you're the type of person that does want to have some sort of investment, you want to have something that's going to possibly be worth more money in the future, yeah, why not buy from the first run and get the numbered limited edition? That's a great way to go. So everybody's going to be a little bit different. Uh, I don't expect it to be any less expensive in future runs that are not numbered. Uh, my particular version here is uh, number 10. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention right there that's a very important thing to a lot of people made in the USA so these are designed machined assembled and shipped from the US that's a big deal and another big thing that I forgot to mention the blade steel it's 154 cm uh, hardened up to 59 Rockwell uh, listen 154 cm not exactly a, a glorified steel there's nothing wrong with it it's gonna work just fine uh, you may tend to resharpen it more often than something like S35 VN or S90 V. It's not a super steel, but it's going to work very, very well. And listen, they had to hit a price point. You're getting an automatic with some nice features for under 400 bucks. If this were 450, yeah, you probably could have seen something like you know what? Probably not even that much. Probably 425 uh, at retail. Then you probably would have gotten S35 VN or something similar to that. But it's a good steel. And listen, when guys like Bob Terzola still use 154CM in some of their knives, some of the old school guys still use it, don't listen to all the know-it-alls on the internet. And don't listen to me. Listen, I don't study steel. Uh, I don't know the molecular structure of every fucking steel out there. But when you have some really great knife makers that still rely on a particular steel, then you got to figure it's just fine. And it's probably going to last longer than you're going to need it to. So, listen, you're going to give your knife a strop every now and then. You're going to put a new edge on it maybe once or twice a year. That's it. It's like anything else. I think it's packed full of value. It's a great carry knife. Try one out for yourself. Um, and if you've got one or if you're getting one, shoot some uh, comments down below and let me know your thoughts on it. Maybe you got a chance to handle one of these. Maybe a friend of yours has it. And see if you feel the same way that I do. I love the feel of the knife in the hand. I love the practicality of the design. And I happen to think it looks pretty good. Is it a major award-winning design piece? No. But it's got great functionality and it's handsome to boot.
I think that's probably the best way to put it. All right, guys, I'm going to get out of here for now. I will see you on the next video.